Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's webinar on online reputation management. This webinar is part of a series being provided by the Department of Tourism, Major Events, Small Business and the Commonwealth Games. My name is Doug Pye, I'm from Phillips Group based in Brisbane and I'm your host for today's webinar. I'm very happy to have so many of you here with us today. In a moment I'll hand you over to Helen Hutchings who is today's presenter. At the end of the webinar, I'll hold questions and answer session with Helen, so please feel free to send your questions through and we will answer these at the end of the presentation. We hope that you find this webinar informative and useful to your business. Helen, over to you. Thank you, Doug, and hello everybody and welcome. If you've uh, attended our previous webinars, you may recognise me as the facilitator. Uh, today I'm the presenter as online reputation management is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I'll just take you through the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to do a little quick introduction and orientation about the software and also my background. I'll then discuss the key workbook points with you and provide examples um, about these points that hopefully will assist you with your business. And then, as Doug mentioned, we'll have a questions and answers session at the end. So please participate throughout the session and ask your questions as Doug will be collating them and we will answer them at the end. So on your screen, you should have a panel and that there is a question section on that panel so feel free to enter a question at any time as I mentioned we will get to them at the end of the session. Uh, please also note that I'm going to ask some polls throughout this webinar but unfortunately for people using an iPad uh, the iPad um, is not currently supported by uh, the GoToWebinar software so you won't be able to participate in the polls and we apologize for that. If you use Twitter, please feel free to interact with us via hashtag QLDBIZ. Uh, we will be checking the hashtag throughout this webinar and if you uh, post a question there, we'll uh, pick that one up as well and feed it in at the end. So a little bit of information about me. I'm a reputation management specialist. I've spent 15 years in the communication and public relations industry and uh, so much has changed in that time. Uh, when I first started we used to use fax machines to send press releases to journalists and now of course we have the 24-hour online news cycle, so a fair bit of change. I've uh, worked on some major projects uh, including road construction where we've had a Facebook campaign against the project so I've had to uh, monitor that and also advise um, our client and the government on how to, to manage that and how to respond to that Facebook campaign. When I worked in the UK, I worked for an organisation that had a number of consumer facing brands and um, one of them was coffee and we had an interesting uh, issue play out at a university where we'd replaced um, their coffee with our brand, our particular brand of coffee and they had to pay more for it and a group of uh, students and lecturers were quite annoyed about this. They got together and they filmed a video about it which they posted to YouTube. Uh, so we had to work out how we were going to respond to that and how we were going to manage the fact that they were quite angry. So we ended up taking that offline. We went and saw them, spoke to the student union and some of the lecturing staff and uh, came up with some, some offers like you know the whole buy, buy nine, get your tenth free coffee just to try and uh, address their issue of cost. And uh, finally, I do a fair bit of uh, business to business uh, reputation management where I do uh, corporate profiling for businesses on you know, IT companies, contractors, uh, companies in the mining sector. And a lot of what I do is online monitoring and just uh, letting them know, you know where there have been mentions about their business and what's, uh, what also are the trending topics in their industry. In my role, I find that online reputation management is crucial for companies. Uh, reputation is uh, one of the most important tools your business can have. It generates repeat business, it generates referrals and it increases your standing in your industry. In the online environment, word gets around very quickly um, and interactions with businesses are tweeted, blogged or posted pretty much instantly. So where once we might have shared our experiences with our family and friends uh, or our neighbours or our business colleagues, 
We're now um, doing that. We're now sharing online uh, where the network is much larger and uh, the potential for a business's reputation to be enhanced or damaged is much greater. And the reason for this is you can see from the conversation prism that is shown on your screen and this is also in your workbook. Uh, it's just that there are so many tools that people are using to communicate and share information online. I mean, we've got picture sharing websites, we've got Facebook and Twitter, we've got blogs, discussion boards and forums, um, <clears throat> industry specific review sites. So whether or not you have an internet presence, your customers could be talking about you anywhere online and you really need to know what they're saying. Before we dive down into online reputation management, I would just like to spend some time talking about reputation. Um, a good reputation does take time to build. It's based on credibility, trustworthiness, reliability and responsibility. And I'd like to use an example of my local dry cleaner that I'm very attached to. For a start, credibility. I believe that my dry cleaner provides a quality service and I have tested that over and over again. Uh, trustworthiness. I trust them with, their, with my clothing because they've always shown attention to service and customer support and particularly that all important wedding dress I trusted them with. Reliability. The clothes are ready on time, every time and I have never had a problem with what they've done. And finally responsibility. They have a strong orientation towards service and they you know, understand and appreciate that I'm, I'm trusting them with these clothes that I'm, I'm rather attached to and sometimes paid a bit too much money on according to my husband. So it's important that if you've got a strong reputation like my dry cleaner, you really don't want to destroy it. A good reputation holds you instead in case something goes wrong. If a customer has a bad experience with you, it can be mitigated through the strength of all of the positive experiences. I'd like to talk for a while about proactive reputation management so that you are on top of what your customers and staff are saying about your brand. But first I'd like to hear from you. So I'm going to conduct a poll. And I'd like to know how you receive feedback from your customers. So. Do you do formal feedback with your customers such as surveys or is it more informal where you get comments or complaints, hopefully not, or compliments from your customers and you get a bit of a feel for what people are talking about with your business or finally you don't seek feedback from your customers. I'm just going to close that off. I can see a lot of you have voted and I will just share those results with you now. So as you can see, only about 20% of you are actually doing formal uh, feedback gathering with your customers such as surveys and a lot of you are doing informal, which is, which is great because you can see some trends that come through informal feedback and you can get a feel for where your business is performing well and where perhaps it isn't performing well. There is a second poll I would like to do now which is about whether you've done a perception survey with your staff. So I'll just uh, give you a little bit of time as to whether you've done a perception survey with your staff as to what they think of your business. Okay, I'll just give you a couple more seconds. I can see most of you have voted and we'll close that off and I'll share those results with you. So about 80% of you are saying that no, you haven't, um, haven't done any sort of perception surveys with your staff and now in this next section, let's have a chat about why it would be important to do that. It is really important to understand what's being said about your business. Understanding why people come to you is important and the why they come, not just the what for. A nursing home isn't just providing meals and a room for an elderly person. It's providing security, comfort the family and expert care. In the case of my dry cleaner, they are not just cleaning my clothes. They are providing excellent attention to detail and they show they understand just how important these clothes are to me. So when it comes to asking your customers for feedback, 
I think a formal survey done once a year is a good way to benchmark your business. It really does help you to understand what your customers think is your core business. What's your number one strength? You can ask them to rate the experience that they've had with you, say on a scale of one to five. And you can ask them how they want you to communicate with them. And this is really important too, because then you can understand, you know, if they do want to interact with you on Facebook or if they do want to, you know, tweet with you. So that formal formal surveys I think are a very important tool for understanding your own reputation. And you can do them in a couple of ways. Um, you can do, if you have a store, you can do an in-store feedback form. And what I find uh, works well is a feedback form with a little tear-off section on the bottom. And the tear-off section, you can ask people to enter their name and um, you know their email address and their phone number. And that tear-off form can go into a box to, you know, which is an entry into a competition. So fill out our survey and you can go into the draw to win XY product. If you're an online business or if you do have a database of custom email addresses, you could do an online survey. And uh, one survey tool I find is very useful is surveymonkey.com. So it's got a free service where you can ask up to 10 questions and then once you've done your survey you can um, download all of the results and do the analysis and it's very easy to use and I think it's very effective particularly because with um, a customer service survey you really don't want to be um, you know, asking more and asking people to fill out something that's extremely long, you just want to be um, you know, able to get some, some quick feedback because you can always, um, if, you, if you discover something that's not that positive about your business, you can easily ask some of your core customers if you can sit down with them and have a chat to them about what you found and what they think. Okay, so I asked you whether you'd done a perception survey with your staff and about 80% said that no, you hadn't. The reason why I really do recommend that people ask their staff for feedback is because Staff are, you know, your frontline contact with your customers. They are, you know, often your number one asset, and they, you know, they need to understand what um, you need to understand what they think is your core business and your number one strength, and also what they think, you know, customers' perceptions of you could be, and also where the business could be um, perhaps improved. And that's what your staff can give you if you talk to them. Before we move on to monitoring your online reputation, um, I'd really like to stress the importance of a social media policy for your staff. Uh, as I said, staff are your greatest asset, but they can also do untold damage to your reputation, either through their customer engagement, which is their customer service, or through what they say online about your business. Uh, if an employee has the ability to post on your behalf, there must be clear rules around this, such as who's allowed to post what and when they can post, how they're allowed to post, which platforms they can post to, and what the screening process is. So if you, as the business owner, do you want to see every post or every tweet before it goes out? Likewise, employees need to be told, and particularly in writing, what they can and can't put on their social, personal social platforms. This is a, a real life example. Uh, it happened in the UK when I was there in 2009. And this was um, someone posting on their personal uh, Facebook page, uh, Facebook profile. And, um, you know, she was saying, I hate my job, my boss is a total pervy so and so, always making me do stuff just to annoy me. Problem was, she forgot that she'd added her boss on as a friend. So he responded by saying, hi, I guess you forgot about adding me on here. Firstly, don't flatter yourself. Secondly, you've worked here five months and didn't work out that I'm gay. Thirdly, that stuff is called your job, what I pay you to do. But the fact that you seem able to stuff up the simplest of tasks might contribute to how you feel about it. And lastly, you also seem to have forgotten that you have two weeks left on your six-month trial period. Don't bother coming in tomorrow. I'll pop your P45 in the post and you can come in whenever you like to pick up any stuff you've left here. And yes, I'm serious. Now, the thing about this, I mean, obviously the outcome wasn't great for that employee. Um, a P45 is a termination form in the UK, so her um, employment was terminated. But also what happened then was it was picked up 
by all of the major media outlets. So there are eight daily Metro papers in London. Um, so I don't think anybody at the time could have avoided reading about this, um, what the employee did, what the boss did, and everybody had a view on, you know, bloggers, um, lawyers all had a view on, on what this did. So it's really important for your staff to be aware of, of what they can and can't do on social media. In Australia, there is a bit of a grey area around firing staff for inappropriate social media use, and that has been tested in a court of law. So I always think prevention is better than cure. So try to prevent your staff and let them know if you say to them you don't want them posting stuff about the business, uh, you don't want them posting stuff about you know they've had a terrible day and they hate all their customers because uh, you just never really know who's who's looking. So how do you become aware of what your staff and customers are saying about you? Monitoring is absolutely crucial, and there are several reasons for this. The first is your um, brand awareness and image. How are people talking about you? Give you an example of my dry cleaner. Again, uh, my dry cleaner is in East Brisbane and they provide an excellent service and I've always found that. And when I've gone online and Googled them, I've found um, you know, that other people have said similar things. They talk about how superior they are and the quality of the service that they provide. So that's really good for their brand awareness and image. Um, Monitoring can also provide um, sales opportunities. I mean, people um, are always asking for recommendations, so it's always good to know, you know, if, what people are asking for and where they're asking for it. And a lot of businesses use Facebook very successfully in this regard for sales. Um, I was uh, having dinner a couple of weeks ago with some friends, and we said, "Where are we going to go?" And I remember that that day on my Facebook feed, I'd seen, you know, one of the local businesses in the valley uh, promoting an promoting an offer, and I said, "Well, let's go there." Um, so if you're not monitoring and you're not engaged online, you just don't know where the opportunities could be. Uh, customer service and feedback is another important reason for monitoring. A lot of time with Twitter and Facebook, you see people um, posting to business pages or um, con you know, um, using the Twitter handle to usually make a complaint. Um, and I think it's often being said uh, that if you use the, the Telstra handle on Twitter to complain, you're going to get a faster response than any other avenue of contacting them. So it's really important to be aware of that. Uh, performance feedback um, is becoming really important, particularly in review websites, um, so industry specific sites, which I'll talk about later. But I um, reviewed a local coffee shop and you know, it was a positive review because I was really pleased with the service, but then the owner of that co coffee shop contacted me via the review website and said, hey, thank you so much for that kind review. So you know, that made me feel, um, feel very uh, positive towards that organisation. And finally, um, you, can monitor, you need to monitor if you're doing any marketing campaigns. So it's really important for marketing campaign analysis that you, know, you are looking at how things are trending on Twitter hashtags or how the pickup is on Facebook or if people are talking about it on blogs. Now this is usually the realm of um, larger brands, but if you're a small business running a campaign, even a small one, it's, it's crucial to monitor those marketing campaigns. And the reason why monitoring is so important can be encapsulated in this diagram about word of mouth. This really shows you how the original comment um, is made and then the reach is increased through shares, likes, forwards and retweets. So people are m most likely to trust word of mouth recommendations from their friends, family or colleagues. Uh, but now conversations are occurring across social media. Um, word of mouth is so influ influential and the networks are so much larger. And um, if any of you were in our advanced Facebook webinar, we did a little preview of Facebook graph search. And you know that really shows the importance of positive reviews because you know, people will be searching through their networks of friends to see what they thought about different businesses or services. Um, so it's only going to get more important to manage and monitor your reputation online. One of the key questions that I often get asked is, well, where do we monitor? Look, Facebook and Twitter are really, you know, the two main sites for most businesses because, you know, you have your Facebook page, you have your Twitter handle, you really need to be monitoring if people are interacting with you through Facebook and Twitter. Um, 
but there is a you know a broader as well that you can monitor through Facebook and Twitter on trending events um, and and industry um, terms and activities as well. Uh, social bookmarking sites um, such as Delicious are, are really good for knowing which websites are popular and what people are referencing. So I will cover off on Delicious uh, quickly on the next slide. But really, um, a social bookmarking site is say, for example, you know, I look at so much stuff on the internet and I use Delicious to collect and collate it all so that, that way I know that on, on, under particular topics I've got a whole lot of different websites that I've bookmarked. Now the thing is you can go on to those bookmarking sites and type in a search term and see the results that come up and you therefore know what people are looking at online and the results up the top of the page obviously are the most popular things that people are looking at online. Uh, blog posts, knowing your industry bloggers is really important. There's um, a lot of what what's termed the mummy bloggers out there. So if you have a business to do with babies or children or mothers, um, it's really important to follow those bloggers and know, you know what they're talking about, what concerns them, whether they've got anything to say about um, your business or industry. And finally, um, there's industry specific social platforms like review sites. Now these are largely business to consumer sites, um, you know, where customers are reviewing their experience at a particular particular business. I think it's not so much a B2B thing as I think, you know, if in a B2B environment my my take on it is that uh, you know, there's sort of the element of professional courtesy that if you have an issue with a business um, and you're a business yourself, you'll, you'll address it with them face to face rather than just get online and flame about it. So I'll just show you um, Delicious. As an example, typed in accommodation Noosa and these are all the links that came up. So it's purely a link collection area. But you can see um, from that what, uh, which links have been most popular online. Now Delicious is an international site so you do have to be quite specific in your search terms because otherwise you know you're just going to get a lot of stuff mainly from the United States. I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about some of these social platforms um, that I think are really important for businesses to be aware of, um, particularly if you're in a business to consumer space. Um, I'll start with the, the international ones and work down. Uh, TripAdvisor is um, massive. Uh, it's got uh, 30 countries, 40 million marketing members and 60 million monthly users. So um, in Australia it's got just under 1 million reviews of Australian hotels, attractions and restaurants. So even if you've got you know a and b in Noosa, um, you'd really want to know if people have you know, put you on TripAdvisor and reviewed your business and you'd want to claim your listing as well. Um, then we've got Urban Spoon. Now Urban Spoon, there's a lot of um, restaurant, cafe review websites out there. Eatability is another one. Um, Urban Spoon, the good things about that is it does feature a lot of bloggers. So if you are a restaurant or a cafe um, or a bar, you can through Urban Spoon find out who all the bloggers are um, in in that industry. So it's, it's, it's very helpful, particularly if you want to invite them to review your networks. Um, the other thing that Urban Spoon has done recently is it's partnered with Dimmy, which is a booking site. So that's they partnered with Dimmy in Australia. They've had um, a booking reservation partnership in the US for quite some time, but now with Dimmy, so if you look up a restaurant on Urban Spoon and you say, oh yep, yeah, that looks great, people are giving good reviews, I want to book there, you can then book it online through Dimmy. So it's an integrated package. Yelp. Now Yelp is a really interesting one. It was founded in 2004, but didn't really have much traction in Australia. In November 2011, they started the Australian chapter with Census, and as of um, last month, they had one million monthly users. Uh, one in five, fifteen, sorry, one in fifteen Australians use Yelp, and they've got 43,000 businesses reviewed. And Yelp um, picks up a lot of um, it's anything to do with local business. So it could be a restaurant, it could be a shop, it could be a handyman, it could be a plumber. And they're starting to gather traction because of that partnership with Census. The final one is um, True Local. It is an Australian um, uh, social platform. It's owned by News Limited, and they've got 8.6 million uh, business searches. And 
the the thing with True Local again, it started off as um, a bit of a business listing directory, but they've really sort of rejuvenated it and put a lot, you know, the interface is a lot more attractive, and now users can leave reviews. And of course, it's got access to the News Limited network to promote itself. So definitely want to look at, um, you know, if your if your focus is local search marketing. There is a fair bit that you can monitor for. Uh, you can, you obviously want to monitor your business name. Uh, you'll also want to monitor any product or service names that you've got. Particularly if, you know, for example, you're a beautician and you stock the Dermalogica products. You'd want to do searches on the Dermalogica products so that you're aware of what people are saying about them. I also think it's a good idea to monitor your industry so that you can understand what the trends are in the industry and what people are saying about the industry and what the issues are and you can decide whether you want to join the debate. Um, the financial services industry is going through a bit of change at the moment with legislation around um, free for service, uh, sorry, fee for service versus commissions. So, you know, if you're a financial advisor, you'd want to be really on top of what's being said online around that industry. You also would want to look at your personal name um, and your employee names. Now, employees can get a bit funny if they think the boss is monitoring them online, but if you feel that you may have concerns about some of your employees and um, what they might be saying about you, then it's probably a good idea to. And also monitor your competitors because you really do want to know what they're up to. I'd like to run another poll now and I'd like to understand how you currently monitor online. So do you do do you use Google Alerts? Do you use Hootsuite? Do you use social mention? Um, do you just do a manual internet search or anything else? I'll just give you a little bit of time to have a look at that. I'm going to be talking through these, these tools, but I'm curious to see uh, what everybody is using. Okay, well, I'll just close that off and I'll just, a uh, couple more seconds, I'll just show you what the, the results are. Okay, so we have a pretty even split between people using Google Alerts and people using a manual internet search and then 17% other. So um, that's, that's, I'd be curious to know what that is if you want to uh, throw that into the questions box. Um, but I'll go through each of these now, but that is, I think that that's fairly representative of what I know of a lot of businesses as well in terms of um, what people are using. So talking about Google Alerts, um, they're a really useful, popular tool um, to use. They are email updates based on your search queries. Um, so you can set up a Google Alert at google.com forward slash alerts, and you can type in any search query, <clears throat> you know, you, your business, your employees, your competitors, your industries, and you can uh, select to have um, everything on that topic uh, sent to you, but, or you can select news, blogs, video, discussion, books. Um, how often? You can do once a day or you can ask um, for it as it happens. So if you're, you know, if you, there's a really hot trending topic, you might want to have Google Alerts as they happen, but, um, you know, I find that that tends to clog your email inbox uh, pretty quickly. So once a day is, is usually best. And in terms of how many, um, it, I tend to go with only the best results because otherwise you get a whole lot of really irrelevant stuff in your inbox. Um, so Google Alerts, I have these set up for so many of my clients just so that I'm aware of what's going on for them and their industry. Uh, Hootsuite is um, an it's, a, it's a good tool. It, it is free. There is a free version of it, though you can pay to upgrade. And of course, the more you pay to upgrade, the better services you get. But when you... Um, when you sign up with Hootsuite, the first thing you do is uh, link all of your um, networks together. So you enter in your Facebook um, page and login, your Twitter handle and login, your LinkedIn login and, um, and password, all of that. And, um, and then it collates it all together so you can monitor all your different accounts different, you know, using different tabs. And then tabs give you a column for you know, feeds, mentions, direct messages, that kind of thing. 
If you're a Facebook user, um, and I suspect this is maybe where the other other came in, is um, you can use Facebook Insights, and so that's um, that's only if you've got a Facebook page for your business, um, but it's a good tool to track user interaction. So it allows you to um, understand and analyse trends on you know user growth and demographics and how they're consuming your content and whether they're creating content from your content. So some of the metrics, people talking about this, so that refers to the number of people who've created a story from your page. So they could have liked, shared, commented on your post, answered a question, uh, responded to an event or claimed an offer. And then virality is the number of people who've created a story from your post as a percentage of those that have seen your post. So you get an idea of the total people that have actually seen your post, how many have then shared, liked, commented and so that gives you um, your virality percentage. Social mention is a nice, quick, easy tool to use. Um, you don't need an account to use social media. It's really just a search and analysis engine. So you can track and measure what people are saying about you, your company, your product or a topic in real time. And it monitors over 100 social media platforms. So it looks at sentiment, so whether it's positive, negative or neutral. It looks at key um, top keywords and it looks at you know where, where it's come from. Um, importantly with reach, which I think is a good thing with social mention, it's the number of unique authors referencing the brand divided by the total number of brand mentions. So the higher that number of reach, the better, because if you're the only one who's really commenting on your brand, you're just one unique user, um, and you want to see a number of unique users uh, talking about your brand, um, hopefully in a positive way. So now that you've you know, started monitoring, you've started, started to get an idea of what's being said online, it's all about joining the conversation. And there's just some rules of engagement um, I thought we could talk through, uh, which help if you're going to join the conversation. I mean, the first of those is to listen before you speak, um, which is really about just be very aware of what's being said online. And if you're going to join, join the conversation, make sure you're across what the conversation's about and who started it and, and where it's come from. Uh, secondly, respect your audience. You know, in the same way you respect uh, all of your customers who walk into your store or place an order with you online, uh, you really do need to respect the online audience. And just remember common courtesy and manners. And this certainly applies, you know, when you're managing a complaint as well, because you know it's pretty easy to get offended. And um, I always like to say, you know, respond, don't react, because your initial reaction might be to get quite cross. But just take the time to sit back and, and think about how you're going to respond to something. Importantly, um, with the rules of engagement, um, when we're talking about listening before you speak, really um, on Twitter, just be very uh, aware of hashtags and what they're being used for. So, I mean, Twitter is international, so um, it's always good to check what is actually trending on that hashtag and what people are talking about. Um, a really, um, an example is uh, after the mass shooting at a showing of the, uh, it was um, the Dark Knight Rises, it was a showing of the Dark Knight Rises in Aurora in Colorado and someone came in and, and I think you remember that shooting incident, uh, hashtag Aurora became a trending topic on Twitter. And a lot of people were updating on that hashtag, posting, um, tweeting condolences, that kind of thing. Uh, the problem was there was a, a shop that sent out a tweet saying that Aurora must be trending because of a Kim Kardashian dress called Aurora. And, you know, highly inappropriate tweet to make on that particular hashtag. But also they got absolutely flamed um, by the people uh, who were tweeting on that hashtag about the inappropriateness of it. So, yeah, just be aware. <clears throat> the other thing um, with joining the conversation, and this will hold you in really good stead if there is an issue with your reputation online, is you know be proactive, um, encourage your customers and clients to give you positive reviews on the uh, industry uh, websites, and um, also try and you know generate a lot of content yourself. And you know always remember that your website is the one platform that you truly control. So um, you know if you if you use your website to push out content and then link that into your Facebook and your Twitter, just get that positive content coming out from your organisation. Uh, it's also good to display affiliations. So if you are affiliated with an industry body that has some credibility to it. Um, 
it's always good to display that affiliation on your website, but also um, you can you know ask that organisation to to backlink you. Um, so that you can you can get that traffic between the two sites. Uh, you know, example is um, a few years ago the Real Estate Institute of Queensland launched a uh, like a trusted agent brand, and you know agents were encouraged to uh, display that in their offices. So that sort of thing would be good to have on a website, and um, that would just help to create that positive content online. So in the final section for today, I'd like to discuss what you do if you get a negative comment online. It could be a post or a tweet to your Facebook page or Twitter handle, or it could be a negative review on a review site. And how you handle it will be really important in protecting your reputation online. So in your workbook, we have covered off on these everything that you need to think about before you you know respond and come up with a strategy for responding. Um, you know it's really important to identify what the complaint's about, um, whether it's actually a specific incident, whether it happened to them or to somebody else, and what are the specifics: products, services, places, times, people. Um, do you know the person making the complaint? Are they a customer in your community, or are they somebody you've got no idea about? Um, and often what's what's important to them, like why why was what happened so bad that they felt they had to get online and vent about it? As I mentioned before, it's important to know which platform the complaint was made upon because if it's your um, Facebook page or Twitter handle, you know, you can respond to that and and quite quickly and ask the customer if you can help work through it and resolve it. Um, if it is somebody else's, like a review website, um, you know, you've got a couple of options. One is um, if it's really vindictive and really defamatory and, and blatantly untrue, you can contact the review websites, you know, like what I mentioned before, the Yelp and the Urban Spoon and True Local, and, and speak to the site admin about it um, and whether they might re consider removing it. Um, that They'll really only do that if it's like highly defamatory and um, highly inaccurate and uh, you know, because the purpose of their review sites is to show the good and the bad. Uh, the other thing you can do through those review sites, though, is you can um, there, there are avenues for you to comment on the review. So you can say, "I'm really I'm sorry to hear you had such a bad experience. Can we, you know, take this offline and talk about it?" Um, and so there's usually, there's always that avenue for you to contact the the person um, and invite them into to conversation with you about it. Um, it's important, uh, particularly if to know if this is a one-off issue that someone's had, in which case, yep, jump on it, close it down, let some, um, well, close it out, sorry, <laughs> jump on it, close it out and, and, and move on, or if this is a trend and you're starting to see um, more and more of this, in which case you're going to have to go back to the very beginning uh, of this presentation and go, well, all right, where are we, um, where is our reputation, where are we damaging our own reputation, what are we doing that uh, means that people aren't getting the service or the product that they're looking for. And you can see from this uh, little Woolworths example that this happens all the time. Um, people will post a Woolworths page and say, I had this terrible experience, and Woolworths does the right thing. They say, look, we're very concerned to hear about this. Please let us know your phone number in a private message so we can follow this up with you ASAP. Thanks. And I the online community is reasonable. They, they accept that you know, not everyone's going to have a great experience all of the time with, with the businesses, but um, you know, as long as you're showing that you're acting quickly and you're taking it seriously and you're being concerned, um, the most important thing is don't end up in a an online argument that everybody can see. So in terms of responding, obviously remain calm, which is what I was saying before. Respond, don't react, because it you know you can get quite offended by what people have to say online. Uh, don't don't ignore it. You know you have to address it in the same way you can't ignore a customer who comes into your store and gets angry at you. You you can't ignore it online. But you do need to take it offline so that your discussion with them is not being played out in the public arena, but you're addressing it um, privately. But it's a good idea, as Woolworths did, to post that, you, you know, let's do that um, so that other people can see you're addressing it. Um, typical uh, response from a crisis management point of view, if you're in the wrong, always admit it, don't try and bluster around it, and ask how you can fix it. If it is an ongoing issue or um, you know something that's not quickly resolved, always um, personally see it through to the end. Make that personal commitment to the customer that you're going to, 
to see it through to the end and always update them on what's going on. So, and that's particularly if um, you know, you've got an issue that involves a number of customers and um, you, know, you need to keep, comp keep the information flowing, keep people out there. Um, be transparent. And then, look, the best um, defence is a good offence, and I talked a little bit about that before, and what that really means is always make sure you've got plenty of positive content online so that if, if something does happen, if there is a negative comment, people will see it in the context that it's one negative comment in the context of all this other great commentary that you've got online. And don't ever underestimate the power of social media. Um, and there's loads of examples online of things that just you know get badly out of control because people have ignored um, a complaint or a comment. I'd like to show you two um, examples because I think these are these are really um, relevant and and very useful. Um, the first one is. Uh, an automotive company, um, so they they had a, a multiple uh, locations, and they did have plenty of um, you know, happy customers, but even so, they had a few disgruntled customers at different locations that left negative comments about the company on on Yelp, particularly, and other some other review sites, and the automotive company felt you know that their their online reputation was was way out of kilter with their offline reputation, which was largely positive. Um, so what they did, they did a, I guess there were three steps to what they did. The first thing was that they gave the managers at each of their locations access to the monitoring platform, um, the reporting alerts and the weekly status updates so that they could really monitor the feedback proactively for their specific location. Uh, they then asked recent customers um, for their feedback and they asked them to, you know, put feedback on um, Yelp, Google and City Search, uh, so that people could, you know, they could start to get some of that good content coming online. Um, and then what they did was they responded to all of the reviews. Um, even if it was negative, they, they said, asked the customer how they could solve the problem. If it was positive, they, they thanked them. They just said, thank you so much for your for your review. So, you know, that's a, a, a really important take out in terms of, you know, engage your managers um, in monitoring, um, you know, always ask your customers, you know, if they can provide feedback online and, and with that feedback always respond to it and acknowledge it and um, work on it if it's a negative. The second example um, was uh, it was a home security company and when you did a Google search on the name of that home security company, it showed um, that seven of the first ten results were negative and this included a un really unflattering video on um, YouTube, um, an online uh, article in a media outlet, forum comments and complaints on Ripoff Report which is a consumer complaint site. Um, and the, cus the company knew that they had a satisfied customer base, but a few bad experiences with vocal customers did tarnish their reputation online. So they took a slightly um, different approach. So what they did here was they created a lot of positive content on YouTube. So they did a lot of videos about you know, how to secure your home and they did different aspects of home security. They also did a little video on themselves and the company and the people that work for them. And they put this content up on a YouTube channel. And then they asked other websites to link to it. <clears throat> and these other websites were industry associations, sorry, excuse me, <coughs> reputable um, product suppliers, uh, local online media and community notice boards. And what they also did in a, in a few dis, dis little um, instances, they contacted disgruntled bloggers and asked if they could change their negative stance. So, you know, give the article less um, preference or also maybe could they consider removing it. Um, but they did that on very few selected ones. It did take about 12 months to purge all the negative content from the first page of search results, but um, that was quite a serious situation and you know they, it, it's going to take time to get that, that positive comment to outweigh the negative. But it does show, I think, also how important it is to build up that positive con commentary online as well. So just in summary from today, the key takeouts, uh, definitely track your online presence as we've discussed. So you can you know, use your Google Alerts or you can use um, some of the other platforms and also check the review uh, websites. Um, and uh, you know, you do it, as we said, 
track yourself, track your business, track maybe your employees, track your competitors. Um, the second thing is to address the issues. So definitely read all the reviews, positive and negative. Um, and then, you know, use the negative reviews constructively, particularly if people bring up the legitimate complaints. Um, and always respond to customer complaints by apologising and, um, you know, offering to fix it. And then the third one, which, you know, is a key part of the online reputation management is to definitely connect and create content. So you really need to engage your customers um, and get that positive content and original content for, you know, for the search engines, which can be anything from blog posts to informative articles to content. Contexts. Um, so those are the three key things I'd like you to take out of today uh, to help you with managing your online reputation. There is further uh, information available. The Queensland Government's Business and Industry Portal has a range of useful um, information tools and these webinars um, are put up there as well for um, videos of them are put up on the YouTube channel and uh, you can uh, also log into that portal as well. I'd just like to hand over to Doug, to Doug for questions. Thanks, Helen. There was some. Uh, sorry. Uh, thanks, Helen. There was some uh, fantastic tips there that you uh, uh, outlined throughout the presentation. Uh, we've got some questions that are coming through uh, from our attendees this afternoon. Um, we had one attendee talk about um, having two guests that had written positive uh, reviews, uh, one from Melbourne and one from France regarding a stay in their particular holiday homes on Yelp um, and both of them were hidden. Now even though the, these were genuine reviews and that they did get in touch with Yelp to reconsider, uh, there wasn't a response. But, uh, are there any other avenues that um, uh, this, this person can use to uh, address that situation? Uh, yes, look, um, the thing with Yelp is they do screen reviews, so um, I don't know the particulars of this instance, but, you know, if they, if they look through a review and they think that either, you know, it's defamatory or if they think it's, you know, basically a paid for or a fake review, um, then they do screen and sometimes perfectly good reviews get caught up in that screening process. Um, right. Without, if if the if um, that particular organisation um, has contacted Yelp and got nowhere, I, I don't know that there's a huge amount they can do unless they can, you know, message those two particular guest reviewers um, through Yelp and say, look, this is a wonderful review. Would you mind please putting it on TripAdvisor as well um, to try and get it onto another another um, a review site. Right, um, and in relation to uh, derogatory comments on Facebook uh, and other social platforms, if, if, if I as a business owner um, respond to and um, I guess sort out that situation regarding the derogatory comment, is it a good idea to then delete it or keep it on the page? No, look, I always, the, the problem is you start deleting comments and, you know, people who've seen them think, oh, and they start to think there's censor censorship going on. And, uh, you know, it's it's this strange phenomenon online. We really um, are anti-censorship and, and certainly um, newer generations are, are seeing that there's no such thing as privacy anymore. So um, certainly the suggestion that somebody might be, you know, censoring posts, deleting posts, it doesn't always scan well with a lot of people. So the best thing is, as you say, you know, respond to it, be polite, show you the bigger person, um, and that will actually help your reputation anyway. Right. And, and what are your thoughts on developing uh, potential scenarios uh, in how to deal with online issues that specifically relate to your business? I suppose, is there any way of mitigating um, uh, any any crisis or issue that might occur online? Oh, look, abs absolutely, Doug. I mean, you know, depending on how much you, you want to invest in it as a business, it's certainly a good idea to do a little bit of a risk analysis before you go online. So you say to yourself, what could happen What and what are we going to do about it if it does? And, you know, that can just go as in as a little manual um, so that, 
you know, particularly if you as the business owner are away and something happens online, your staff are empowered to do something about it. But certainly you can just work through the different scenarios of, okay, somebody posts about this or, um, you know, we have we have you know a security breach what are we going to do about that um, it's good to work through and it's just a brainstorm it's as simple as getting your staff together and saying okay what could go wrong <laughs> and just whiteboard yep. it all out what could go wrong and then say right what are we going to do about it how are we going to handle it um, and then Excellent that, advice. that helps yeah and um, is there anything that you can do if you believe it may actually be one of your competitors who is deliberately placing negative posts online about your business? Ooh, yes, look, that comes back to what we were sort of saying before where if you believe that it is, yeah, somebody like a competitor or, you know, defaming your business, um, you can contact those review sites and say, you know, I'm really not happy about this, I suspect it's this person and I'd really like to investigate it. Um, but uh, and that's how you can address it through the review sites, um, unless you definitely know it's your competitor and you can <laughs> have a go at them about it. Um, yeah. all, all you can really do is um, get as much of your positive content out there as possible and ask your um, customers to uh, to do the same. Right. And uh, another question that's just come through here: um, What's the easiest way? to reply to a negative review of your business on TripAdvisor? Um, ooh, look, in terms of the easiest way to reply to a negative review, um, well, as we said before, it's, it, it's always best to say, you know, can we discuss this with you and ask to take it offline because if it's a negative review and it's genuine and they've had a bad experience, you as a business will really want to know what's... Um, what's going what's going on um, there's nothing you can really I mean you might be able to persuade them to remove the review TripAdvisor won't um, unless of course I said extreme circumstances so you might by taking it offline you might be able to persuade the reviewer to um, ch to change it or upgrade it to say after having a conversation with the business you know I, I feel much better about it and they have resolved to do X, Y and Z. So all you can really do is, um, is work directly with the reviewer themselves. And you know, it is an issue because if, if someone's put a bad review online and they've had a bad experience with your business, you really do want to get to the bottom of it. So think of it, it's a horrible thing to happen because it's, you feel quite gutted about it, but um, also you know, it's an opportunity to look to improvement. Um. Great response, Helen. I'm just looking at another uh, question that's come through. Um, what should I do if my Facebook or website gets hacked and the person gets personal details of my clients? Oh, okay. Um, well, your Facebook page has got likers, so I'm not sure of the... I'm not quite sure how your Facebook, unless it's your personal page and that person's got the access to your friends um, and their information. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm not sure of the technicalities around how you deal with that and how, you know, a hacker would get access to it. But you'd certainly want to notify Facebook and then you certainly need to post and let people know what's happened and also advise them to, uh, you know, if, if for example... Um, you're concerned about personal data, advise people to change passwords and that kind of thing. So you, first of all, you need to sort out, it's probably a good idea to get, you know, an expert in sort of the, an IT expert in to figure out what's gone wrong and also let Facebook know what's happened. But then um, also to, uh, to notify your, um, you know, your fans, your followers or your friends about what's happened and, you know, apologise profusely and say, please will, you, uh, <laughs> please will you change your personal passwords to make sure that, you know, yep. it's shut down. Absolutely. And look, in regards to reviews that people make about your business online, um, how quickly should you respond to those reviews? Is it one day or is it a week? Or <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, look, it's always, it's best to respond as quickly as possible. 
Um, but as I uh, as I said in the presentation, always just take that deep breath first. So don't just get on there straight away and react to what's being said. Take a second to look at what they've actually complained about. Can you identify anything in that? Like, does that sound familiar? Did you have? Was there someone who had a similar sounding experience? If it's you know, if you've got a physical store or restaurant or something, does someone have that actual experience there? Um, but then it's always best to respond. I, you know, you try and respond definitely within 24 hours to say, look, sorry to hear that. Really would like to discuss this with you. Can you private message me and we'll take it offline? Yeah, and I guess with even positive reviews, it really acts as an excellent opportunity to um, uh, invite that person to become an advocate for your business or your brand uh, in the medium to long term, isn't it? Oh, look, completely. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, positive reviews are great. And if you respond to those positive reviews and say thank you, it just helps to tie that person even closer to you and they think a lot more positively mm. about you. Absolutely. It, it, it just seems as though there's such a strong link between the management of your online reputation and your efforts in search engine optimization. They seem really to go hand in hand, don't they? Look, yeah, they, they do. Um, because, you know, if people are going to search on you, you do want really positive stuff that you've generated or your customers have generated to come up in those searches. Mm. Um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you, Helen. Um, thank you. I hope that everyone's managed to answer the majority of everybody's questions. Uh, we really appreciate all of your feedback and your input throughout today's webinar. It's been a great discussion. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed it and found it useful for your business. Uh, as has been the case with our previous webinars, we're going to be sending out an evaluation survey later this afternoon and we would appreciate your feedback. Uh, and again, this, this webinar will be uh, made available uh, this afternoon. Um, thank you again for attending and, and please uh, enjoy the rest of your day.